Welcome in to this Wednesday edition of the flagship. I'm your host, Zach Barry. As you can see, if you're on YouTube, JW Player on the website, OpenSpirit.com, you can see our man Greg Jones, the meat man from LB's Meat Market. And uh, as you can also see, if you're watching on video, that I'm still in the satellite studio, um, pending results on the uh, on the office downstairs. We will try that out later today to see uh, how the monitors are doing after the uh, the hundred year flood in East Nashville. But we're here, and we're going to talk uh, some Ole Miss football wide receivers specifically, as uh, Ole Miss has another good group. Uh, it seems to be a trend. Greg, as uh, Ole Miss continues to stockpile those playmakers. Before we get into it, do want to remind you, this show, uh, just like each and every other one that you hear or watch, uh, is brought to you by our friends at College Corner. Scott and everybody over there takes care of us, and they will take care of you. they got three locations, Oxford, Flowood, and Ridgeland. Uh, The new one in Oxford, 4,000-plus square feet. It's a great space, tons of stuff. You can go get some new merch. You can get some uh, tailgating supplies. If you need to make a, uh, a quick gift purchase, you can go over there and see them. Uh, and if you can't get to any of the three brick and mortar, you can check them out, collegecornerstore.com. And uh, the shipping and handling is superb. It will get to you quick, fast, and in a hurry. All right, Greg, good morning. Or I guess we should say afternoon as uh, we're still shuffling around here in the satellite uh, satellite studio. But uh, welcome in. Always good to get back on this on the podcast with you and uh yeah dog days of summer and uh are here in oxford really uh uh, now that the college football game is coming out like uh, it's about the only college football fix you can get right now until i think it's 90 days 89 or something like that uh yeah it needs it it needs to hurry up and get here that's what it needs oh yeah i think almost football is inside 90 i think it's 88 maybe yeah 87 I'm uh, trying not to get too excited about the football season, but I'm very excited uh, with the with the new additions and everything, and uh, love uh, love how it's uh, how um, how um, Kiffin's uh, already tweeting at the uh, at the Instagram, you know, the most key games <laughs> of the year, and Ole Miss isn't in, on one of them. So, but yeah, no, we're Which, uh, to be fair, that I, was ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, Missouri, Air, uh, Alabama. I mean, come on, give me a break. Yeah, it was it, I'd that, that was absurd. Colorado and Colorado State. Well, I mean, like the Colorado, like we're still doing this Colorado thing, like Colorado yeah. Nebraska. I don't consider that a game that will shape the season. No, like, I, so. I don't, I don't think Colorado is going to be any good. I don't have a lot of faith in Nebraska. I, I think they'll be better, but I don't necessarily think that a game against Colorado is going to shape. The college well, football I, landscape. I'm, 40, I'm almost one thousand percent sure if Ole Miss is undefeated and out, and Georgia's undefeated, that game will sh- shake up the uh, will shake up yeah. the uh, the playoff. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, let's get into a topic I wanted to discuss with you. Um, yesterday, or actually, it was this morning. I, look, when when your basement floods, you lose track of time. I, I'm already I already lose track of time as a father, and then your basement floods and you just lose track (laughs) of days. Um, Okay. So this morning pro football focus uh, put out a ranking of uh, the top wide receiver groups for 2024. Ole Miss came in at number two behind Oregon. Respectable. Fine. Um, I think Ole Miss's group this season has a, (laughs) certainly has a case to be the the top group by season's end. Um, But I wanted to talk to you about this because look, I know that, the wide receiver you title is thrown around by a lot of people, whether you measure that by draft picks or hall of famers or success, you know, at the, at the college level, whatever. Um, Ole Miss certainly has a case to be in that conversation. At least I'm not going to declare them wide receiver you, but I do think that uh, that there is a, uh, there is a a bit of respect that Ole Miss is entitled to. Um, Cause I went back and looked, Greg, the, Oh, we had some gamers. I mean, I mean, I, and look, I, I'm going to stay kind of in the. I don't know, you know where we start. You know, I mean, like, I mean, right. I guess, do we so, start with Dexter, or because was he wide receiver or running back? I mean, like, I, I mean, do I, we, by, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, like, I would say we you start with Moncrief because, like, okay. he had his own rap song. He had his own song, and <laughs> kind of everything got famous, and 
uh, you know, I, there was a lot of talent on that team. And so, I, I mean, but I can remember, I mean, like uh, a customer of, of ours that come in, I think Corey Peterson was a great wide receiver. Um, yeah. Um, shout like out to the, the uh, shout out to the alma mater. Yeah. Right. High school. Uh, yeah. They, they called him crazy legs. Um, I, so I, I just, I just stuck in the 10 year window. I, I went back to 2014 um, okay. and that's, and that's no disrespect to anybody before that. Obviously. I mean, Shea Hodge is in the record books. Um, he was back, you know, kind of in my era when I was an undergrad, uh, See, I'm actually, a Mike Espy guy. I like, I mean, I'm a big Mike Espy guy. I, I mean, I grew up, Chris Collins was my dude. Yeah. He wore number eight. I wore number eight. That was a big thing. And he was a stud. Yeah. Going back to Corey Peterson. Um, I, I mean, there were tons, you know, Grant Hurd, there were tons of really good receivers, but I'm going to stick in this 10 year window that we got a bit of a theme this week with, with the 10 year window here. Um, I'm just going to throw out some stats at you because I went back and looked at it and we're going to come, you know, looking at this group for this season compared to past groups and how deep different wide receiver groups at Ole Miss were 2014 Ole Miss nine and four, um, probably started the height of kind of Ole Miss being a, a household name, a national brand at that point where you beat Alabama um obviously everybody knows what happens with the head coach you freeze and you need to play all that whatever but that that year was kind of when Ole Miss became you know oh like this is a this is a trendy program now this is a cool thing that year Greg you had Laquan Treadwell who only played in nine games 632 yards and five touchdowns Cody Core played in every game 558, six touchdowns. Evan Ingram, 10 games, 662 and two touchdowns. And Vince Sanders led the way, 696 and six touchdowns. Didn't three of the four play in the NFL? Yes. Uh, let's go one, two. Two are currently in the NFL right now. Um, and Ingram and Treadwell. Uh, but that was a deep group. I mean, Vince Sanders probably would have had a really good shot at playing in the NFL, if not for the injury. Um, but, I mean, that right there, you got three dudes over 600, and then Cody Core right there knocking on the door at 558. You go yeah, to the well, next uh, season. Tw- it definitely helped that we had a solid running game for those uh, – give free up those receivers because of that. Sure. That style, of, that style of offense we had, and there was a lot of quick slants and over the middles and stuff like that. It was kind of a, you know, a zone scheme offense, so – uh, that was when yeah. the yeah the RPO became a huge thing, yeah. And and Ole Miss was Bo Wallace was the trigger man. He was good at it. Um, all right. Next year, 2015, Ole Miss 10 and three wins the Sugar Bowl, first 10 win season uh, in a long time. Um, six and two in the SEC. We all know what happened. Fourth and 25. We don't have to talk about it. But that year, Laquan Treadwell even. Even with the injury, which I think really changed how he was as a player. Oh, yeah. Over a thousand yards, 1,153 yards receiving, 11 touchdowns, played in every game. Then you had Cody Core right behind him, 644 and four touchdowns. That's another thing. I don't think Cody Core gets enough credit for how good he was as an Ole Miss Rebel. Just as steady a receiver, steady as a productive offensive weapon that Ole Miss has had in recent I'd years. Love to see, I would love to see a stats called drops of how many drop passes. Like I I, I feel like Cody Ford never <laughs> dropped dropped anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um another thing I didn't mention, the Quan Treadwell had 82 receptions that season. Just yeah, wasn't there a couple games where he had like 10 and 11 receptions, like something ridiculous. I mean, it was almost kind of like the 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 prequel of AJ Brown. Like just kind of yeah. like the the style of get him the ball in those, you know, three wide receiver sets. Um, yeah. You know, get him, you know. Um, yeah, you could definitely see how the offense offenses have changed in the last 10 years for sure uh, also. Yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't also mention the Quan Treadwell attempted three passes and completed all three. So oh, very, wow. very Hugh Freeze there. Yeah. How many um, t- uh, touchdowns? Like just the one with one. the tons of, one to touch Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Then we've Man, got. I'm still really upset about the uh, the uh, highlights of the game with Oklahoma State uh, stiff arming us in the in the in the highlights. We 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 beat Oklahoma State all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I, look, Twitter Twitter went to bat for Ole Miss <laughs> really fast. I mean, everybody was pulling receipts. Like, hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> Joining I mean, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'm pretty sure Oklahoma and Ole Miss are Oklahoma State and Ole Miss are right by each other in the game. Like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, no. look, it, there, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some live edits during the season. I'm sure of <laughs> of some rankings and some 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 ability levels being adjusted. <laughs> um, Quincy out of Boyjo, right there with Cody Core, 604 yards, seven touchdowns for Quincy. Um. Demorier Stringfellow was a big time get out of the. Uh, this was pre portal. He transferred yeah. in, five hundred and three yards, five touchdowns, and then Evan Ingram four sixty four and two. Markel Pack three eighty and three. All right, yeah, now it, we keep. You look at like you know the Stringfellow like that's kind of like uh, kind of like so much like the Metcalf situation. You know, big size, big wide receiver uh, yeah. can go down the field. So it's all it's almost kind of. Uh, as we go over this to see how they get replaced and who they get replaced by and the set, you sure. know, the style player, it's kind of, kind of pretty yeah. cool. He wasn't, he wasn't nearly as fast as Metcalf. Not, not many people are, but Stringfellow was, was big and could run. So he yeah. was a, he was a handful 2016, almost five and seven. We all know what happens with freeze, but still a lot of production from the receivers. Evan Ingram led the way with, 926 and eight touchdowns. Demorier Stringfellow, 716 and six. Van Jefferson, 543 and three. Quincy Adeboijo, 456 and one. AJ Brown, true freshman, five, uh, 412 and two. Um, so even with a terrible year, Ole Miss still ultra productive at receiver. Then we go to 2017, six and six. A.J. Brown, 75 receptions, 1,252 yards, 11 touchdowns. Just absurd numbers as a true sophomore. Um, Demarcus Lodge, 698, 7. D.K. Metcalf, 646 and 7. Van Jefferson, 456 and 1. Dawson Knox, 24 receptions, 321 yards, and zero touchdowns. I think that's the statistic that will just live in infamy in Ole Miss football, that Dawson Knox never had a touchdown reception. Um so still, you know, I, think I mean, you get a really good payback on every time to bet Dawson Knox first touchdown in Buffalo in Buffalo games. I think if oh, you yeah. like do a fifty, if, if you do a fifty dollar bet for throughout the season, I think you're going to get a pretty solid return on that. Like because he yeah definitely gets three or four. I mean, it's it's very surprising. Yeah, he yeah he's been as steady as anybody in the NFL. He's got he's kind of beloved up there in Buffalo. He's got a good good relationship with. Uh, with Josh I mean, Allen, so that, that the helps. Like they actually drafted a tight end, and so I mean, yeah. still to build, yeah, still the, be on that roster is pretty. Solid. It's uh, Kincaid, right? Yeah, Dalton. Yeah, the kid from Utah. He's good. Um, all right. I and, think look, you can I, create a lot of mismatches in the tight end, you know, linebackers, sure. especially the athletic tight ends that you know, like Dawson. I think is the first tight end of you know, of many. Of, well, Evan started the you know kind of the tight end flex you know wide receiver yeah. look and so i think you can really uh take advantage of those and you know you see kiffin with the uh smaller wide receiver kind of like the scat back you know the dayton wade look uh that can yeah. really cause trouble for an outside linebacker that's for sure all right um 27 or 2018 excuse me five and seven with matt luke still just incredible numbers 85 catches 1,320 yards, six touchdowns for A.J. Brown. I, he was one of those where it was like when you when you watched A.J. Brown, you didn't have to be an NFL scout or a GM or somebody that coached football or evaluated players. It was pretty evident that A.J. Brown was going to make a lot of money doing oh, football yeah. professionally. Especially when he was doing, like, batting practice for the Padres during all of this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, just, like... just, just, just for fun. <laughs> Just, hey, you know, just, uh, I mean, I wasn't a uh, top draft pick, so let's just go hit the ball around right quick. 
Yeah, AJ's just trying to he's trying to keep busy, man. He, you know, he's just trying to, you know, stay loose. Uh, Demarcus Lodge, another one that's kind of an unsung hero. 65 catches, 877 and four. DK battled the injuries, 26 catches, 569 yards and five touchdowns, 20, 22 yards per reception for DK Metcalf. I mean, just a monster. Uh, and then Elijah Moore, 36 for 398 and two. Um Dawson Knox had close to 300. Brace, uh, Braylon Sanders had close to 300. So, I mean, just, again, yeah. even it on is, a bad it, team. <laughs> that's still... a tough pill to swallow to see all those pit players and not yeah. and go five and seven. But, I mean, you know, it just goes to show you, like, it's like there's been talent at Ole Miss, you know, regardless of week, what year, yeah. it, you know, has, has gone through. It's just you got to put the whole team together. It's, tough, it's a tough thing to do. Yeah. And, and look, going into 2020, you've got the first year of Lane Kiffin, COVID season, so shortened year, five and five, go to the Outback Bowl, win that one over Indiana. Matt Corral, first year in the system with Lane Kiffin. Uh, and yeah, you guessed it, did skip a beat. 86 catches, 1,193 yards, and eight touchdowns for Elisha Moore. Basically, that was what got him into the NFL. Obviously, projected well, but uh, that season alone, kind of turned turned a lot of NFL GMs heads and we're like, oh, we need to pay attention to this dude. Um Kenny Aboa, 27 catches, 524, 6. Dontario Drummond, 25 for 417 and 7. Jonathan Mingo, 27, 379 and 3. So um a little dip, but you obviously had the marquee guy in Elijah Moore carrying you know, much of the load over a thousand yards. Then you go to 2021. This is where I think uh, Kiffin. Well, I think that year with it being an all SEC schedule and, you know, and COVID, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of just, you know, it's kind of really kind of like when you think back of it, you know, uh, putting that team together and, you know, doing what they did and, you, Pretty know, incredible. Making that, you know, winning the, I mean, that was huge. Like, so. Sure. Uh, definitely set you know set the stage for you know the next three to four years. I mean, as you can, as you'll see when we go through the these stats and the in the record. Yeah, yeah. That that's I'm I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. That's a that's a huge point that uh, needs to be made. You know, Elijah Moore did that against all SEC schools in a good Indiana team. So i uh, just crazy numbers. Um, this is where I think Kiffin kind of I don't think people talk enough about it and just the innovation the ability to know who your guys are and get them the football in the right way and also just a testament to how good Matt Corral was and this is all you know all due respect to these players it's not the groups that we were just talking about the AJ Browns and the Quan Treadwells the DK Metcalfs um Elijah Moore's, you, you know, these, you know, Quincy Lodge, Vince Sant, you know, it didn't have those guys. Dontario Drummond over a thousand yards with 76 catches, eight touchdowns, just a. What's his a, average per catch? Probably over 15. 13 and a half. So he yeah. did a lot of possession stuff, but I mean, just as dependable as any wide out that Ole Miss has had in recent memory. Um, and I mean, a guy that Kiffin just kind of turned into the number one dude because you had Jonathan Mingo went down with the injury, only played in, in six games. Um, but then Braylon Sanders averaged close to 23 yards per catch, 549 yards. Jacor Pearson, another just wild success story out of nowhere, close to 400 yards. Um, and then Mingo still managed 346 and three with the injury. Um, so just basically all of this to say, I'm running through a bunch of statistics here. Um, Ole Miss has been incredibly productive year in, year out at the wide receiver position. And this year might be the best that Ole Miss has had in a very long time. You've got the 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 returning guys in Trey Harris. you got Jordan Watkins. Um, I think a lot of people around the program expect Caden Lee to have a huge year. And then – I won't call it pressure, but there's a lot of, I would say, anxious energy around Aiden Williams. Highly touted dude out of high school. 
didn't really do much last year. I, I think he was kind of swimming a little bit, was trying to learn the playbook. Um, and then other guys kind of emerged, but they expect him to be a factor. Um, and then you want to talk about who they brought in. Juice Wells. I, I mean, the dude was was a cheat code for South yeah. Carolina in 2022. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tore up, tore up Clemson, who I think had two NFL corners on that team in 2022. Um, torched them, uh, had the nagging injury a year ago, and then sat out the rest of the year to basically rest up and then find a place to play, ends up at Ole Miss. Um, I think that right there is – has a truly has a chance to make Ole Miss a just bona fide, not only a college football playoff team, but a team that could potentially go 12 and 0. No, well, and another thing you look at the you know, those wide receivers that we just talked about, you know, uh, if, if somebody, I mean, if you want to put somebody over the top on Trey Harris, I mean, you've got one on one with pre scoring, so I mean, like, that's. We yeah. just got done revert, uh, going over all the stats of all the wide receivers, and most of those teams didn't have a really solid tight end that they, you know, could put in the lineup that could block and get yeah. down the field. So now that you have that angle, I mean, what, are you going to put another safety over the top, you know, to help on pre scoring? So, you know, there's a lot of options, you know, and that definitely helps help, you know, Juice Wells' product, you know, I mean, stop going down the future because – you can actually set up plays that will be, literally be, you know, either a go route or a set up play on a, you know, for him that creates mm-hmm. a one on one with a safety because, you know, either the linebacker, you know, so the the matchups that are is going to be the nightmare for 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 these defenses on this wide receiver core, and that's why I think you know I'm shocked that they're you know two, but hey, look, you know, we'll take two and uh, be one, you know, when we get done at the end of the year. So it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish it. So I really just feel like the matchups and you know when you look when you look back at all the wide receivers that in the last 10 years, you look at like who's going to be the next AJ Brown? Who's going to be the next uh, Elijah Moore? Who's going to be that possession re- receiver, you know, like C- Cody Core. So you always, you know, look uh look at solid pieces that were in the offense and in the offensive scheme that you can just find that same kind of uh, uh, core player, uh, you know, a 6'3", 220 possession receiver or something like that. But, you know, I think the Juice Wells is going to be really, really – if he's healthy, I mean, who knows? I mean, he can – you know, I, I would hate to put him – one. I'd hate to have him matched up one-on-one with either a corner or a free safety, you know. Um, so, um, I think, uh, you know, the offense uh, is going to be scary good and just – like you were saying right. with Adrian, 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 well, I mean, you know, that's a big, it's a big question mark, but, um, you know, he's got to step up and he's got to realize that, um, you know, we're in the big boy water, uh, and it's time to uh, start swimming and not sinking, you know, and, uh, and I think he'll, he'll step up and, uh, you'll see him, be, uh, get into the offense good, but, you know, getting somebody, keeping somebody like Jordan Watkins on the team. I mean, you, he just yeah. is a solid Huge. leader solid leader in the locker room, you know, this, this guys, you've got these guys that are younger that are coming in and, you know, uh, I feel like, you know, you can lean on somebody like him. You can lean on somebody like Trey Harris in that wide receiver room that have been there, played SEC games and, you know, been on the big stage and be like, look, you know, just trust yourself, trust your skill set, you know, and uh, just, you know, keep, you know, make plays whenever, whenever the ball's being thrown to you, because, you know, it's almost got to the point where this offense is almost a pro style offense, and most pro style offenses, when you throw it to a wide receiver, they're gonna catch it nine times out of ten. So, um, you know, you, you would you would think that you know if somebody drops something, the next guy, I mean, Kiffin's almost the type of person that he's got so much depth in the in the depth chart in the re- receiver room that he's willing to you know move some things around and try to find uh, something uh, for somebody else. So I just. I'm trying yeah, not to get excited I, about it because, like you said, you just we just went over the stats of previous wide receivers and what we've got now, and uh, it's a matchup nightmare for I think for some for some defenses this year. 
The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Hi, this is Kevin Kessinger, former Ole Miss baseball player, son of Ole Miss Hall of Famer Don Kessinger, and dad to Ole Miss All-American shortstop Gray Kessinger, and your local community banker with BNA Bank. BNA Bank has invested 125 years in our communities, and we know the needs of North Mississippi businesses better than anyone. As a commercial lender with BNA Bank, my priority is Oxford, and I'd love to help you and your business with any lending needs. Visit www.bnabank.com to learn more. BNA Bank, local, invested, modern banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Protecting homes and businesses from the whims of nature, you need more than just quality materials. You require Riverland Roofing. Licensed, insured, and certified, Riverland Roofing offers not only the assurance of excellence, but a tailored approach to your unique structural needs and budget. To learn more about what Riverland Roofing can do for you and the community, call them at 662 644 4297 or visit riverlandroofing.com. This is Cali. With C Spire's blazing fast nationwide 5G network, she's got her fans in the palm of her hands. Live streaming her Mississippi blues from her phone wherever she is. Out there, wherever they are. Right now, get the latest 5G phone on us. Only at C Spire. Customer inspired. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 601-953-8449 and get your free quote today. Yeah, Watkins coming back is is a huge, huge thing for this offense. Not only just being older, being a leader, experienced, knows the system, knows what's expected, but I, I think is going to be a, a big part of the development of Caden Lee and Aiden Williams and the other younger guys where he he's going to demand a lot. You know, hey, this is how we do things. This is what's expected. You know, it's, it's time for you to step up. You know, hey, this is year two for you. No more excuses. This is a college football playoff mindset here. Um, and I think it's huge, like you mentioned, you know, just dependability, the consistency. Jordan Watkins, even even with the hand injury last year, as good as, hand, as, good a hands no, yeah. as anyone. Um, and I think that that possession guy in the slot – it's going to be huge on third downs. And then with Priest Corn being 100%, just another weapon in the middle of the field. Oh, yeah. The defense well, is going to have to account whenever for. Whenever you see somebody like Jordan Watkins, like doing the blocks, making the box, you know, to free up these. I mean, because we had, we won't even spend, you can spend two hours on the running back room. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. you've got, you know, you've got a, uh, an SEC running back. Uh, um, you know, into the, you know, with the with the kid from LSU. Uh, I mean, I think that Ohio guys, you know, just got almost kind of like a versatile. I mean, it's just uh, you know, the, uh, it's just you, you as you can see the rosters uh kind of kind of filling in, and uh, you know, I think Kiffin was right whenever we went to Georgia, and he, you know, watched Georgia, and he said, hey, you know, Georgia was just bigger than us, and. We got to get bigger. We got to get faster. We got to get better. And uh, <laughs> I think he's uh, accomplished that this summer. He just got to put it together and uh, put it on the field. But, uh, you know, the schedule's there for the taking, obviously. Uh, so you just got to take advantage of it. Ho- hopefully nobody gets hurt and, uh, you know, and just keep building on um, building on every game. Yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be a huge part of this team. And, and I'm not going to say it's going to – dictate 
a lot of wins and losses or dictate how this season goes for Ole Miss, but I, I certainly think that it, it can make or break certain spots in the year where I think there's going to be, you know, you mentioned Georgia going to be a good defense, probably going to really test Jackson dart to beat them with his arm. Um, now Ole Miss has those weapons to do it. So I think that's huge. Um, and I'm, you know, you mentioned you were trying not to get excited for college football season, but this podcast is certainly not helping your, your, your <laughs> helping you do that. As, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, it's just a, it's a way that the, you know, the program's developed in the, the last 10 years. I mean, you look at sure. it, like you were saying, the first year, um, you know, uh, everybody was like, man, maybe Ole Miss is, uh, you know, back and maybe they are legit. And, you know, beating Alabama twice uh, in a 10 year span is, is nice, nice feather to have in your hat. But, you know, you, uh, you, you definitely, whenever the Lane Kiffin was hired, um, you definitely can you know, create, a, you know, a winning culture, a totally different culture that, you know, uh, can be a game changer to the fan base and everything in general. So I feel like a lot of fans, you know, I, I, the expectations are extremely high because transfer portal is number one. And we, you know, did pick up some, you know, some big guys up front and where we were, you know, lacking in the spots that we were lacking. But uh, you know, you still got to remember the Ole Miss angle. So <laughs> hopefully, uh, yeah. hopefully the Ole Miss uh, angle is uh, is done and dusted, and uh, you don't have to worry about that because this isn't your mom and pop Ole Miss, and there's no more whammo situations. So uh, ho- hopefully, uh, the season works out. I'm excited about it. So it can't get here so quick enough. Yeah. Um, before we get into our next segment, I do want to. Uh... Remind everyone, this show is also brought to you by our friends at USA Benefits Group and our buddy Drew Moak. You can call him 601-953-8449. If you're uh, looking to cut those health insurance premiums by 20 to 30%, save a little money. Drew is your guy. He's an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi, and he's licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35, it's three, five different carriers. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. That's regular health plans, life insurance, dental, vision, all of that and more. Call him today or check him out, usabg.com slash D-M-O-A-K and get your free quote today. All right, Greg, we've got uh, we've got some some horse racing to discuss as this weekend. Um, you have got uh, the, the last leg. Yep. Ready. Last leg of the Triple Crown, 156th running of the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga um, Race Course. This is the first time in New York. It's a, it usually is run at Belmont. They're doing some track updates at Belmont, so this is the first time it's being run at Saratoga. Does that do, do you think that will affect things? Or do, have no, you talk no, to anyone no, that, that thinks that? I mean, like I would think Saratoga is like the elite racing of uh, racing. You know, like. Uh, between Churchill Downs and Saratoga, um, you know that's the that's the uh, the upper echelon of of horse racing. You know there is a lot of racing throughout the country, but uh, you know if you said you had a horse that won at Saratoga or won a graded stakes at Saratoga, uh, you had a really really good race horse. So uh, and Saratoga very similar to Oxford, Mississippi. You know it's got a uh, real small town vibe. But uh, mm-hmm. instead of the football team and the college, they have the horse track. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good time. Uh, Saratoga Springs, I actually recommend going and doing that. Uh, weather's yeah. beautiful. Uh, it's just that time of year. But, yeah, I think this is the first time that it's ever – the Belmont has been run at Saratoga because I think they're putting a torpedo track or a new tra- – they're doing a new surface at Belmont. And so Belmont won't be ready until next year. So – um, so yeah, I went to Saratoga for the first time last year and man, it's a rocking time. I mean, like I couldn't imagine what your parents would say about Saratoga if they enjoyed Churchill that much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that they, they might become horse, they might become horse racing people now as good a time as, as, well, as they, they and... their, well, they got grandbabies. So they got, they got, they got grandbabies to take care of. <laughs> That's true. Um, all right. So I know. You know, you got a you've got a big iron in the fire this weekend as sees the gray, um, eight to one odds. Um, yeah, got... we, we can go over the preakness last uh, last race. I mean, you can just tell whenever the horse gets out to the lead, it was a sloppy track, and that's what sees the gray. He was a gray horse and had a black. Uh, the jockey had black silks, 
and I don't think he had one speck of dirt on him. So that's what happens in races like that. You know, if you can control yeah. the speed, get out front, get out early, uh, set the pace, um, you know, and I will get, you got to tip your hat to Mr. Dan. He ran, I mean, you, you could tell he was trying, trying to get there. Um, but I don't know what, what Miss Dan's going to run like this, uh, this weekend, you know, that's three pretty grueling races that he's, you know, that he's run in, in short period. And, um, you know, I, 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 I do like Miss Dan, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe long term, but uh, I don't, uh, you know, Sierra Leone is just, he had a nice break from the Preakness. Uh, he's been at Saratoga training, and uh, uh, I think Sierra, I think Sierra Leone is going to be pretty tough to beat uh, this weekend. But who knows, man? You know, Saratoga is the graveyard of favorites. Uh, that's kind of like uh, Saratoga's theme. There's a lot of really, really, really good horses that have been at Saratoga and uh, been heavy favorites, and they've lost. I think American Pharaoh. Uh, would be one of them that you know some people listeners might know uh he got beat by a horse named keen ice back in the days uh at saratoga mm-hmm. so so saratoga uh you know it's it's a it, it's a uh it's an old racetrack it's an old school racetrack and it's been they've been racing for a long time there and uh you know it's a tough place to win so uh it should be a really good race i, I like sierra leone I, I, you know i'm uh, definitely pulling for, I'll pull a little bit for Seize the Gray just because I have a share with the, my racehorse. And, um, but there, it should be a really good race. And, uh, man, it, 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 with it being first time in the Saratoga, it, you know, it should be different. You got a, you got a pick or anybody that you like? Um, I, like this my, weekend? I like my Philly and race six at Louisiana Downs Saturday afternoon. Uh, okay. <laughs> No, uh, hopefully she wins. She's been knocking on the door and she's been, man, she, she, uh, we've, uh, she's knocking on the door and then she's sitting on a win and hopefully, uh, hopefully she rolls, uh, Saturday, but no, man, you know, the way Sierra Leone ran in that last race, uh, in the Kentucky Derby, the layoff, the time off, uh, the training and being in Saratoga, he's going to be tough, but, uh, I'm going to go Sierra Leone. Uh, I'd love, uh, it just depends on if Sierra, if, if sees the gray gets out to the lead, uh, if there's no dirt or no, if that, you know, jockey's clean coming around the corner, uh, he might have plenty, uh, plenty of, uh, juice in the tank. So it should be a good race, but I just think Sierra Leone should be too tough in that race. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say Sierra Leone is at nine to five odds right now. Um, mind frame at seven to two. Mr. Dan, five to one. Yeah, it's, I think that's Rapoli's horse. Um, yeah. I, and then I think Resilience is in this race. Um, yeah, Resilience, 10 to one. We can kind of run through them here. Wine Steward, 15 to one. Antiquarian, 12 to one. Dornick, 15 to one. Protective, 20 to one. Honor Marie, 12 to one. So it's a good race. I mean, you know, I was going to say, it's a triple crown. I mean, you know. You it seems like it's kind of wide open. Day. Yeah, it does. I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, what, uh, like I said, if Sierra, if uh, sees the gray gets out to the front and, you know, there's no dirt on him and he comes around the corner, like, and the fractions are kind of on the 20, 24 to 47, 48, you know, if they let him jog around the, around the track, uh, he's going to be tough to beat. So, um, you know, those closers have to have speed to, to run to. So, that have, as you can tell, um, in the Kentucky Derby, you know, the just Sierra Leone and Forever Young just ran out of – ran out of – ran out of track. You know, they just uh, – they didn't go fast enough up front for them to – for them to get there. And uh, uh, and um, Mystic Dan uh, held on. So, so it just all depends on that uh, those first fractions. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, it's going to be fun. And like you said, new new location, it'll be exciting for that. People will be fired up and try to make something out of nothing there, as you as you alluded to. I mean, it, I don't know. Like, how is it for, you know, horses are different than people where it's like, what's, you know, how different is the weather? You know, what's, uh, you know, yeah. how's that going to affect things? I know it can affect the track, but I don't think the horses really care about <laughs> humidity or. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's some horses that train like rock stars in the morning and then they get to the afternoon and they were like, why is it hot? Or why is the sun in the, in the sky? You know, because 
you know, usually you try to work a horse around six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, you know, um, uh, you, you, when you run a horse at six o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the sun is in a different part of the sky and any, I mean, I know, you know, I'm pretty sure horses know when, you know, what time of day is and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just, it's, it, they're unique animals and that's why, you know, there's, I have a buddy that has a horse and he, she trains like a rock star in the morning and she'll get to a race and she'll just freeze up, you know, being around other horses and stuff like that. So, uh, just since it's a real frug, uh, frugal, uh, frugal, uh, animal you're running with. Last thing, um, what's, uh, what's the latest with the, uh, the shop this weekend? I know it's, uh, it's summertime officially in Oxford. Yeah, Graduation's over sweet, with. Sweet, yeah, sweet summertime, you know, when's football getting here? I mean, I think I'm, uh, I ask my mom every day, is it, is it football season yet? And she's like, no, nope, we just started June. So we've got two solid months to get through. So, um, no, it's, uh, you know, steady as we go up here, uh, I'm about to make a bunch of sausage about to make some boudin and uh cut some fresh steaks and uh, get ready for the weekend all right well um go see greg this weekend if you're in town scoop you up some uh some steaks some chicken always some... mention the podcast we'll, we'll give you a ten dollar lane train we'll give you a you know you sausage or something like that it definitely helps whenever we know 2008 university avenue go see him uh scoop up some uh some stuff to grill out this weekend you got super regionals to watch i know the rebs aren't in it but uh you can still uh take in some baseball um so we uh we appreciate everyone tuning in appreciate everyone's patience uh with me and in my my schedule this week i hope the the satellite studio is not bad um yeah it looks good i like got Um, some bourbon got some bourbon and got some tequila on the wall got some got some old uh little looks like an old record uh yeah that was uh that was from our wedding that was a gift from uh the uh the uh, wedding party so yeah pretty cool um yeah it's not bad yeah, we'll be back in a the, nice little office yeah we'll be we'll be back down in the basement soon uh so fingers crossed on the equipment down there i think we're gonna be all right but uh but appreciate greg hopping on appreciate you listening tuning in watching on youtube wherever you might be uh be taken in the podcast stay locked in on spirit.com we will have coverage of uh recruiting this weekend uh more official visitors in town um i will be down in tampa for ot7 finals we'll have tons of content from down there tons of Ole miss prospects and targets down there um competing so uh for greg over there i'm zach this has been the flagship presented by college corner and lb's meat market we appreciate y'all tuning in until next time we out of here